Hi everyone, Elliot Jacobson here for Advanced Advantage Play, and today I want to talk about a progression betting system in Bakra that I received via a question from an email. Now, before I do that, I want to just remind you that I do have a policy on my website as far as asking me questions about this. Here's my contact page. Look at that last paragraph. Please do not send me an email asking me about any mythological method to beat a casino game including timing, hot and cold dealers, win-loss targets, leaving while ahead, progression betting systems, or any other voodoo. Well, uh, let's just uh, understand that I did get that email and I sent the person to some videos I previously made and then they wrote back and gave me details of the system. And well, me being the kind of person I am, I had to write a computer program that modeled the system. Uh, let me just show you this in the very last paragraph here. Just to summarize, this is a, a progression betting system that is a six step martingale progression. In other words, you double your wager after every loss. You start by betting on player. If you win, you go back to one unit. If you lose, you double the player. And again, if you win, then you go back to the beginning of the progression. Otherwise, you double again. So it goes player, player, player. After you've lost three players, you switch to banker and you go banker. If you lose another banker, if you lose another banker, and if you lose all six, well, then you just forget about it and go back to the beginning betting one unit. So this is a six step progression. So the betting sizes are one, two, four, eight, 16, and 32. Now, I actually wrote a little computer program and I just want to show you how that works. Um, let's just run it. So this computer program, I'm actually, if you stay tuned, I'm gonna show you the code to this program so you can verify for yourself that this thing is correct um, in terms of how it's modeling this system. But let's just go ahead and run this. So sixstep.exe, we're gonna run 100 million shoes. That should be enough, right? To determine whether this thing is a long run uh, winner or loser and exactly what kind of house edge, if it changes anything at all. So this is gonna take a while. I'm gonna speed this up in post, so hang on, here goes. Okay, everybody, we are done. And I just think that you can look at those numbers down there. I'm gonna talk about those in just a second, but before I do that, let me actually remind you of the combinatorial analysis for Bakra. So here is the actual analysis, the mathematical theory that tells you that the house edge is about 1.06% for the banker bet. That's that number in the lower right of the top table, and the house edge on the player bets about 1.24%. Now, when I was doing these simulations, what I had to do, because we're making some player bets and some banker bets, is I had to collect the total number of player bets and sort of, and how much the player won, I had to collect the total banker bets, how much the banker bet won, and so I had to get those two separate house edges, and then I had to combine them to get an overall house edge. If you look at these two numbers, 1.06 and 1.24, the middle point is 1.15. So if you were playing just a pure even mix of banker and player, you would expect the sort of combined house edge to be about 1.15. However, the way this progression system works, 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, is those last three wagers on banker are much larger wagers uh, by size than the player wagers one, two, and four. So we might expect this to sort of um, be skewed slightly towards the banker edge, a little bit less than 1.15. So, all right, let's go back to our actual results from our simulation and see what we got. So what we got for the player house edge here is 1.235, all right? I mean, we can't get too many decimal places. This is a simulation, so that is 1.24%. Uh, the banker came out about 1.05% instead of 1.06. Again, it's the simulation. And look at that overall house edge. What did I say about 1.15% would be what we expect? We got a little bit under that, 1.145. So. 
this is about as dead on as you could possibly hope for if you wanted to say that this progression system did absolutely nothing as far as changing the house edge. So again, I just want to say that as clearly as I possibly can. This progression system did absolutely nothing to change the house edge. Any betting system that's just based on some pattern and is not otherwise using information, I've talked a lot about information, it's going to lose at the house edge. You cannot change the house edge by rearranging how much you bet and when you make a bet. If you could, the laws of the universe would not exist. We would be in some other universe than this one. So it's not even a hypothetical question. So, okay, let me actually show you the code now. So make a hard break here. If you're the kind of person who likes to see code, stay tuned. I'm going to take you through it. Otherwise, this is a good time to take a break. And definitely, if you're going to play Baccarat, learn some advanced method that works, like card counting a side bet or something else. I mean, don't fall for this nonsense. And please, don't send me any more emails. I've asked you not to. Don't. You can tell it triggers me just a little bit. All right, here we go. So now we are into the part of the presentation that has to do with coding C++. So all of this stuff at the top is just sort of standard stuff. Um, let me take you to some of these variables here. So the player total, banker total, these are just when we're actually figuring out the result of the hand. Um, so I have some variables here, let's see. Current wager, that's the amount we're wagering on the current hand. Next wager is the amount we intend to wager on the next hand. You will need those two variables if you're doing a progression system. You see I have the total player wagers, the total player win, the total banker wagers, the total banker win, right? And uh, how many shoes we're going to play. I then um, declare an array. That is a shoe array, and I initialize, and I shuffle that. I have a shuffling algorithm I will sort of scan through down below. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to play however many shoes. My simulation at 100 million, and we are going to shuffle the shoe. What I do is I look at the card in the first position, and I go to that spot in the shoe, and that's where I'm going to start. So in other words, we're going to burn the initial cards corresponding to the first exposed card. And our next wager is one. We're starting the progression at one. So each shoe starts over again with this progression. We don't carry on the progression from the previous shoe. All right, so now let's deal out the shoe. So what do we do? Well, our, our um, player total and banker total are zero. We don't know what those, that's going to be yet. Our current wager. So whatever the next wager is, and you'll see how I determine it as I go through this code, that's now we're going to assign that to our current wager. And our total wager is the total amount we bet in the entire thing that is our, uh, we're adding our current wager to that. All right. So if our current wager is one, two, or four, that means we are betting on player. So I'm going to add that to our total player wagers, right? So if we're wagering one, two, or four, we know it's a player bet, add that to our total player wagers pile. If it's 8, 16, or 32, add that to our banker. So now I'm going to play out the hand, and so I deal the first four cards. I figure out the total. I figure out whether it's a natural and so on. I do all the stuff to figure out the whether to deal a fifth card, whether to deal a sixth card. This is very standard code for how you deal a hand of Bakra. So if you've ever wondered, this is what it looks like. You deal four cards and all of this stuff through right here is just a matter of figuring out um, the result of the hand. So now we have the player total and the banker total. That's what the hand was. And look, what do we do here? Well, if the player total is greater than the banker total, that means the player hand won. So now let's resolve it. Well, there's six possibilities, right? The current wager was 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, or 32. If the current wager is 1, that means we bet on player. And since the player hand won, 
then we are going to have our, the total amount we won. So the variable P win, I forgot to told you about, tell you what that is. That's the total amount we're winning or losing for the entire game, right? So we're kind of have a bin that's putting everything together. That was that 1.14% uh, percent, um, result. All right. And um, look, if the wager was won and the hand was uh, a player, then player wins the current wager. And what we know is the next wager is one. If the current wager was two, again, if the current wager is two, then we knew we bet on player, player one. And so we're gonna add that to our variables and we're gonna set the next wager to be one. If the current wager is four, we are gonna say again, we won, right? Because we bet on player and the result was player. And so we add that to our win. But if the current wager was 8, 16, or 32, what do we do? Well, if it was 8, 16, or 32, we know we bet on banker. So in those cases, what I'm going to do is I lost that current wager. I lost that current wager. And we're, again, we're doubling. So if it was 8, we double to 16 for our next wager. If the current wager was 16, again, we bet on banker. The result was a player. Then we lost the current wager, we lost the current wager, we're gonna bet on 32 next hand. And if the bet was 32 and we bet on banker, but the result was player. Again, we're gonna lose, but now we're gonna start the martingale over again. And now what happens if the banker hand won? In other words, the banker total was greater than the player total. Well, then we're gonna do the exact opposite of what we did above, right? Um, if the current wager was one, two, or four, then we know we bet on player and so we lost. So uh, we lose and we double our bet. We lose and we double our bet. We lose and we double our bet. So the reason I wrote it out like this, I could have uh, definitely simplified this code, is because I wanted to sort of make this available to you in case you wanted to um, manipulate it. If you want to try your own, you know, do a six step, a seven step, an eight step, a combination of various things, you can kind of get the feeling for how you can rewrite this code. Um, okay, if the current wager was eight, 16, or 32, we know we bet on banker. We're in the situation when banker wins. And so how much do we win? Well, we're in commission games, so we're gonna win 0.95 times our current wager, right? We're taking out the 5% commission. So the total uh, banker win, we're gonna add that to it. We're gonna, the banker is gonna win um, that amount and our overall win rate is gonna be that as well. And we see we're gonna set our next wager to one. So that's it. And of course, look, if the hand entered in a tie, then we're not going to do anything. We're just going to leave things the same. That's usually how these progression systems work. You don't change anything. And then I just run the thing, right? I just run it and here's the output. And that's all the code is right there. That's the entirety of the code. And I'm just going to let you see how I initialize the shoe and the algorithm I use to shuffle the shoe. Um, and, um, you know, it's just not that, uh, that hard to do this. Um, I actually, yeah, there you go. I have an audit to make sure the shoe is what I want it to be and so on. Okay, I'm going to try and make this code available to you. I'll put a link in the comments, but you can see this is the, this is the code that does what I claimed it did, right? It's not doing something else. Um, so let me just come back. Hi, everyone, again. So what did I just show you? I just showed you that a six-step martingale uh, based on the pattern player 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 banker 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 does absolutely nothing zero to change the house edge right an absolute zero an absolute waste of time if you think you're winning if somebody tells you they're winning using this system if you see somebody using this system and they say oh this is a winning system then one of three things they are either lying to you or they are delusional or they're lucky and they luck does happen right so one of those things is the outcome but what is definitely not the outcome is that they have a winning system so all right everyone i hope that was fun for you sally jacobson see you later